guys and welcome to Hare Gastro. In today's video, we will be talking about gastroenteritis or the gastric flu and this disease is also commonly known as the tummy bug. So let's get started. So what is gastroenteritis? Gastroenteritis is the irritation and inflammation of the gastrointestinal tract that involves the stomach and the small intestines. The severity of gastroenteritis mainly depends on an individual's immune system's ability to fight the infection. So if you look at my image on the right, you can see this little green bit and that's gastritis, which means the inflammation of the stomach. And then below we have this orangey color that is within the small intestine. And that is the enteritis, which is the inflammation of the small intestine. So from the name gastroenteritis, we get that there is an irritation and inflammation of the stomach and the small intestines. But what causes this irritation or inflammation to these parts of the GI tract? So the answer to that question is actually a virus, a bacteria, a parasite, or even some sort of foods which may irritate the lining of the GI tract and can cause gastroenteritis. The classification of gastroenteritis. So just a minute ago, I said that the disease can be caused by a few pathologic organisms, and I said viruses, bacteria, parasites, or sometimes food. So now we're going to talk about the specific subtypes of gastroenteritis, and this is the classification of the disease. Viral gastroenteritis. Viral gastroenteritis is highly contagious in nature and is the most common form of gastroenteritis. It can spread with close interaction with infected people contaminated food or water, the sharing of utensils, or practicing poor hygiene habits. The virus responsible for the infection could easily spread through the air or through close contact. The most common viruses involved are the noroviruses, the rotavirus, adenoviruses, astroviruses, and the calici viruses. Bacterial gastroenteritis. Bacterial gastroenteritis is uncommon and generally very serious in nature. The infection in bacterial gastroenteritis could spread through poor hygiene habits, contact with the infected people, the sharing of eating utensils, contaminated water, and contaminated food. The bacteria most commonly implicated are Salmonella, Campylobacter, Shigella, Escherichia coli, especially subtype 0157H7, and Clostridium difficile. Eosinophilic gastroenteritis. This disease is a rare disease in children and adults. It is characterized by food-related reactions, infiltration of certain white blood cells called eosinophils in the GI tract, and an increased number of the eosinophils in the blood. So if you look at my image at the bottom to the left of your screen, you can see these infiltrations of these bunches and bunches of eosinophils. The eosinophils are part of the white blood cell family, and they are found in our blood and are usually elevated or increased in great amounts when our body is undergoing an allergic response or an allergic reaction. So in this case, the pathologic organism or the invader that the body is trying to fight is actually certain types of food that we may ingest. And this large amount of eosinophils don't just infiltrate the GI tract in those specific areas, but the amount of eosinophils in the blood also increase and that tells us that an allergic response is currently going on in the body. Now let's talk about parasitic gastroenteritis. Here, the most commonly implicated parasites are Giardia and Cryptosporidium. Certain intestinal parasites, notably Giardia intestinalis, also commonly known as Giardia lamblia, adhere to or invade the intestinal mucosa, causing nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and general malaise. The disease is usually acquired by a person-to-person -person transmission, often in daycare centers or from contaminated water. The Cryptosporidium parvum parasite causes watery diarrhea and is accompanied by abdominal cramps, nausea, and vomiting. In healthy people, the illness is self-limited, lasting about two weeks. In immune-compromised patients, illness may be severe, causing substantial electrolyte and fluid loss. The Cryptosporidium parasite is usually acquired through contaminated water. And in my little image below, you can see the man bathing here in the contaminated cryptosporidium water. And this is pretty much how the disease is spread. And in the picture on the left, we have a microscopic image of Giardia intestinalis or Giardia lamblia. 
Signs and Symptoms of Gastroenteritis So patients with the disease may present with headaches, weakness and fatigue, loss of appetite, fever and chills, abnormal flatulence, bloody stools, nausea and vomiting, diarrhea or blood-stained diarrhea, abdominal pain and cramps, and dehydration. The Diagnosis of Gastroenteritis Gastroenteritis is typically diagnosed clinically based on a patient's signs and symptoms, therefore no specific diagnostic tests are usually required. If symptoms like fever, diarrhea, or bloody stools are persistent for two weeks or more, then examination of stool for Clostridium difficile is advised. Also, blood cultures are recommended to identify bacteria such as Shigella, Salmonella, Campylobacter, and Enterotoxic Escherichia coli if they are the cause of the disease. Microscopy for confirming the presence of parasites, ova, and cysts may also be helpful. So these are actually the cysts of the parasite Giardia lamblia, and this can be helpful in the diagnosis of parasitic gastroenteritis. Treatment. Gastroenteritis is usually an acute and self-limiting disease that does not require medication, but sometimes medical therapy is required. Medical treatment. If the patient is not able to take in fluids by mouth because of vomiting, an IV may be inserted to restore fluids back into the body for rehydration. Drinking fluids may help to avoid dehydration and relieve symptoms. Fluid replacement helps in correcting electrolyte imbalance, which in turn may aid in stopping vomiting. Antiemetic medications may be helpful, especially for vomiting in children. And antiemetic medications basically means medications that prevent or stop vomiting. Antibiotics. Antibiotics are generally not given until a specific bacteria has been identified. Bacteria and protozoans that are amenable to antibiotic treatment include Shigella, Salmonella tifi, and the Giardia species. Following each loose stool, children less than two years of age should be given one to three ounces of rehydration solution. And that brings us to the end of the presentation. If you made it thus far, please give this video a big thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe, comment, and share. If you would like to download a copy of this presentation, you can click the link in the description. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye for now.